Rocky um, listens, and he never overplays, and he... It's like sometimes he'll just do this little simple little line with the octaves. It's just so effective. It's just so needed and, you know, but, but he doesn't like, I mean, there's so many, and Brian Lee and all these different keyboard players and Tulsa and piano players, I mean, they can play circles around the cosmos, but they, I think, learn from him. What does he bring to, to the... To the to the plate that is so special as a as a piano player and a musician. Rocky ties it all together. He can you can have three different musicians that's never played together, and it, it might sound good, but Rocky's the one that can get in there and just weave it all together and make everybody sound good together. That's kind of my experience with Rocky. He's got a a way about that to where he can just pull people together and make them fit. Let me show you guys. Here's what we're looking for. What about that? Yeah, like we could swing it if you guys want. I don't know. Here's what here's the actual feel we're trying to get. Okay. was kind of the first guy I called in uh, to to play on a session with me because I'd just done a guitar and a guitar overdub and then had a bass player and drummer for years and years and years, you know. And uh, uh, But the main reason I brought Rocky in was it just seems like when Rocky's around, uh, people have a sense to be, I don't know how to put this up, but people are a lot more polite when Rocky's around. Uh, this bunch of knuckleheads we all hang out and play with, it seems like when Rocky's around, everybody has a little bit more uh, decorum and uh, uh, sense of course and not saying the wrong thing. And you know, because Rocky's one of the guys that, uh, out of all the struggle around here, I mean, Rocky, is, Rocky plays with Kale, you know? Yeah. And, and John Kale is like, uh, He's so huge around here. It's it's uh, to, among the musicians, you know. Uh, uh, he's you know, Rocky's in that bunch. You know? And so when when I asked Rocky to come play on that cut, it wasn't so much for how he plays piano, but it was just the vibe he brought. I mean, he's, uh, he's like one of those original blues hippies that I've seen a resurgence in. <laughs> Once I got to, to know Rocky, I quickly came to love Rocky because uh, he's a special person. And he's, he's very intelligent. He, he just can do so many things. And, you know, he's the, he's, when J.J. Kale tours, Rocky is his keyboardist. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, he was, well, it was a year or so ago in Dallas when they had that big show down there. He was on the stage with Eric Clapton and a lot of other great musicians. So, you know, Rocky's right up there with the best of them. And, uh, and one thing I admire about Rocky is he's, he's very humble. I've done two feature stories on Rocky in the last, oh, they were both done two or three years ago. And, you know, I, I asked him about, you know, his style of keyboard playing and so forth. And he says, you know, he says, he says there's a lot better musicians in Tulsa than I am. And he says, I'm talking about other keyboardists. You know, and he names off Walt Whitman, and, and, a, and he just goes down the line and names five or six other people that he admires and wishes he was as good as they were. <laughs> and yet he is playing, yeah. you know, with J.J. Kale. <laughs> He's as so, good as he can get. So that's Rocky. And I, I asked Brian Lee about Rocky Frisco the other day, because, you know, you got me thinking about it, and he was like, oh, Rocky, I love him, man. He plays so so simple and so great. 